I'm Kevin Mack. I was the visual effects supervisor for The Grinch. The central challenge of The Grinch was to translate Dr. Seuss's intrinsically two-dimensional graphic style into a three-dimensional and very realistic world. My son died. There are over 600 visual effect shots in the film, totaling about 43 minutes of screen time. Over 300 of those shots are major computer-generated effects. We were involved from the very beginning, and so really in our first meeting with Ron and Todd, when they were just developing the story, they came out to see us, you know, talk to us about this project. And I was showing him some of the uh, earlier work we'd done with uh, opening title sequences. And they were saying, well, we got to do something really special for the opening title sequence. So I, I started thinking, and I, I thought of an earlier Dr. Seuss uh, story that I'd read that had a whole world in a speck of dust. And I thought it would be cool to have something like that, where you have this powers of 10, orders of magnitude scale change. And then Todd Hollowell suggested that rather than a speck of dust, it could be a snowflake. And so then uh, Ron and Todd let me just design that whole opening title sequence. So here we see the inside of the ice cave uh, as a wireframe of just the ISO surface. And now the shader wipes on, showing the crystal simulation. And then now we see the clouds coming in with the light beams and so on. These uh, volumetric density functions actually simulate the attenuation of light in real clouds. Now we reveal Mount Crumpet and the world of Whoville. There are over 40,000 computer-generated trees in this shot, as well as the entire town of Whoville. Because uh, so much of the film takes place outdoors, they built this huge set of Whoville's town square and those buildings. And then we built four times as many buildings, extending it out and then going further to the suburbs, as well as Who Valley, Mount Crumpet, and the surrounding mountains for 100 miles in every direction. We created a virtual 3D location. This is a shot from the opening of the film where we show uh, what was shot on stage, and then all of the elements wipe in the town and all its buildings, as well as a number of computer-generated characters. You can see as they turn to wireframe and are brightly colored where the computer-generated characters are. We have a number of supervisors and then whole teams of artists and technicians. Any one shot may have 20, 30, 40 different people work on it. As we see that the tuba you can see where we tracked in a 3D CG tuba, and then this little peewee horn player pops out. Because of the limitations in the ability to add prosthetic makeup to whole crowds, uh, we developed a, a tool kit. We called it the Who Construction Kit. And what it allowed us to do was to make hundreds of completely unique characters rather quickly. This is the Who Construction Kit, where we have uh, control over the facial and body proportions, as well as uh, clothing and fabric textures. It's interesting because doing the visual effects, we are... Uh, we, we sort of touch on every aspect of the filmmaking process from creating the virtual location as well as the lighting uh, and the designs of, of buildings and, and everything else. Here's a shot that was created entirely in post-production. We had some stills of the set that I took and we needed a big crowd scene. So we populated this set with over 200 computer-generated Who's. There are no actual actors in this shot. Fetch me my sedative! Here's a shot we did on the back lot where you see a, a few set pieces and the car with blue screen behind them. And then here's the final shot where the entire background, including that other car driving by, is computer generated. Here's another shot where we shot a foreground element of this uh, character putting the star on the tree. 
and we extended the shot and added the entire world behind him. Here's another one, mostly blue screen, the set piece in the Grinch without any wind or snow or atmosphere. And we also uh, actually added uh, a bit to the Grinch's smile here to exaggerate it. Here's the final version where you see all of the snow and wind and the moving clouds in the background and the distant mountains. Notice the snowflakes landing and melting on the Grinch's fur. And then here at the end, you see how exaggerated his smile becomes. So they want to get to know me, do they? They want to spend a little quality time with the Grinch. I guess I could use a little social interaction. A lot of the film takes place outdoors, and uh, there's all of the sky and mountain vistas in the film are computer generated. There are no photographic skies or mountains in the film. I wanted the skies to be a character in the film. Um, I wanted them to sort of reflect or mirror or accentuate the mood of every scene. So for instance, up on Mount Crumpet, it's the stormy, dark clouds are swirling around and they're moving really fast and all the low-lying clouds cruising over the mountains. After the heist, after the Grinch steals all the presents and Max the dog pulls all the, the presents up the hill, that's sort of this pre-dawn sequence. And so we basically took the whole sequence down and made it very dark and kind of purple and red and, and moody so that when the Grinch has his epiphany as he's watching the sunrise, which is another completely computer-generated shot, you get this lifting of the emotions because the sky has changed along with his mood. No! Another really ambitious technique we developed for the film was for the sleigh ride. Uh, the sleigh ride utilizes a number of groundbreaking methodologies in that uh, the sleigh is actually physically simulated. In this shot, this foreground set piece is real, and you see that the sleigh is rising up here, but now you see that the sleigh, the dog, and the background are all computer generated. Here in the final version, notice the swaying of the elements of the sleigh, um, the banner blowing in the wind, the rocking of the skis, as well as the dog, Max. I got you, Cindy Lou! Here we see another entirely computer-generated shot. You see the various elements wiping on the backgrounds and the 3D mountains. This was a shot I suggested because uh, it seemed like we needed a, a sound of music, really wide helicopter shot to show us the overall terrain. Here's another overview of a making of a completely CG shot for the downhill sleigh ride. Here we see, again, an entirely computer-generated shot, the physical simulation of the sleigh, procedural uh, particle snow, uh, 3D trees and terrain. It was really quite a challenge to make these shots look completely real when everything in the shot, from the foreground to the background, is computer-generated in broad daylight. So here you see the various particle systems that generate the snow coming off of the skis and displaced by the sleigh as it careens down the hill. You'll notice that the actual chunks of snow, as they are thrown into the air by the sleigh, displace the ground as they land. So we, we actually went to Utah and shot plates and a number of shots of the sleigh going down the hill. but. Um, because of uh, changing weather conditions and because the location didn't really have quite the Seussian quality that our CG environment had, we uh, wound up replacing all but four of those shots. Here's the shot from Utah, and then here's the sleigh placed into our CG background. 
you know, we worked with pretty much every department on the film. Michael Kornblith in the art department, uh, Alan Hall in the special effects team, uh, Rick Baker in the makeup effects team. And so, consequently, everyone was just incredibly collaborative and cooperative, and it just made for a really pleasant and fun project. It was a huge amount of work, but um, you know, we just we had a really good time doing it. It was it's just an amazing opportunity.